Ini maka terus. Ini maka loka. Rai dalam bami. Rai dalam bami. Ini maka warna kukung. Rai narom. Para hamutu. Ita foti fari wa fongi da. Rai fongi da. When I first travelled to Timor Leste, I heard music everywhere. Songs of revolution, freedom, independence and love. Music gave a voice to the people of this nation. myself a singer more like a shouter I often say to people I've been in band for 30 years I can't sing a note but don't let that stop you you know it's, it's so much more than just a band when I met Gil Santos you know that that changed my life is one of the defining moments of my life and I, I often say to pe people look I lost one brother in East Timor but I gained another one in Gil and um, even though I'm 10 years older than Gil, Gil's a very wise old soul. And he's, he's spent a lot of time going, Paulie, just calm down. You'll be okay, mate. Just take it easy. And, and the fact that he played reggae, you know, it's sort of, it was a lot more sort of laid back and, and great. And he also taught me a lot about politics that I didn't sort of know. And, and you know, we decided to incorporate that in the music. And it was a really effective tool. Mm. You know, the death of my brother up at Balabo really affected me. My brother was one of the five, there were five journalists who went up to sort of um, report on this invasion that wasn't, wasn't supposed to be happening. We've been told that Balabo was hit by artillery and mortar this morning. But unfortunately, they were right in the the danger zone when the Indonesians invaded the country and uh, they got caught up in it and I mean to this day when we're still unsure exactly how they sort of died but that's still open to conjecture so that got me involved with Timor and I can remember thinking like in three days time, time I'll never talk about Timor again that'll be it you know it'll just be this passing thing and that was over 30 years ago, and I reckon every day I would talk about it in some capacity. Uh, my name is Gil Santos, and I always play for Adilo's house. But I was born in, into a family that everyone plays music. Uh, my father was a musician, and, um, and then, you know, growing up, the war and, and uh, when, my, when my father disappeared the only thing that he left for us was a soccer ball and, uh, and a guitar. The team with music has been oppressed for the last 400, for 450 years by Portuguese, by Portuguese uh, colonization. Nobody believed that team when they, when they would become independent but our music, our music played uh, a, a big uh, big part of it. The songs were, were about uh, the struggle and, and um, anti-colonialism and all that. And for me, it was so special. During the uh, referendum, uh, Indonesia put so much money on promoting the, um, the campaign for Timor to be part of Indonesia. And, um, and uh, we had to do something about it. And Napoleon and came up to me, said, let's record Libya Rally. So, and that is how everything starts, like became very, very important. The band has contributed to a lot of development of Timor, Timor Leste. We try to use music in order to to make the society understand about the politics development. And that's, that's very, very important. We heard that the Indonesian governor of um, Timor had put out his own pop songs and was playing them at Dili Airport when people arrived. And we heard that and went, no, 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 no. We've got, to come, we've got to come up with something ourselves. So I said to Gil, what does, uh, what's liberty, you know, in, in 
you know, Portuguese. And you said, Liberdade. And I went, oh, okay. And from that, it just sort of took off. And mm. I have spent six months working on a song. And it's terrible, you know. We wrote Liberdade in three minutes, you know. Literally, I think we were walking on a stage at a protest here. And I said, Gil, it goes sort of like this. And you're going, like, that, that, that. And I'm going, yeah, that, that'll do. You're right? One, two, three, go. Oh. met some activists from Melbourne Uni, remember, and they um, put it on green cassettes and they smuggled in about 600 copies to Timor because they weren't allowed to say, you know, this is the Dilly All-Stars Liberdade. They just had, just had green cassettes and they slipped it out all around town to the taxi drivers and the restaurants and and to, to everyone, so this song really spread around team. Yeah, look at Liberdade, it, it certainly took on a life of its own. And As soon as we arrived in the airport, all the kids following me, singing Liberdade. Yeah. Half day, whatever it was. Remember? Mate, I, I've That's been, crazy. We, we haven't made any gold records, you know, or, you know, made lots of money from this, but to have little kids running up to you, eating, you know, going, Liberdade! Liberdade guys, you know. It was because I knew Glenn Wheatley, who was uh, John Farnham's manager, and, and he heard me prattle on about Timor for many years. So when he was going to do a, a big peacekeeping concert up there, he said, oh, Paulie, you know, bring the band up. And we were, we were like, I said, Gil, do you want to go to his team? And he was like, yep. The Dilly All-Stars HG, they performed earlier on. And as people can appreciate, keeping the flag flying for East Timorese independence in Australia has been a difficult task over the last 25 years. But bands like the Dilly All-Stars have been doing it. They've made the spark into a burning rag, into a flame, into an absolute explosion of freedom here that we see tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dilly All-Stars! It was this really big gig and Channel 9 and Channel 7 were filming it, so we really had to have our act together. Australian Army, you know, we, we were camped in with them and but I was just so proud of them because the main thing you would see would be an Australian soldier with a big gun in one hand, holding the arm of a little kid in the other, you know? The, uh, the development is almost stagnant uh, from the last 20 years, and um, maybe the government has, doesn't have our right priorities, and we can see the result of the last 20 years when um, we always want uh, the government to focus more on education and all this. Um, the, the hardest part is that um, the veterans still have a lot of influence in Timor's politics. And they may be good in fighting the enemy with guns, but you know, when it comes to economic development and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they continue like that, it's going to be really hard. The only hope is to reform the whole, uh, every sector of society and bring in the young people into politics. That's the only hope.